you know, in the history of American sport, there's only a handful of people that uh, that we'll be talking about, or someone will be talking about, a hundred years from now. You know, obviously Richard Petty, Babe Ruth, you know, people like that. Uh, Michael uh, Michael Jordan, and most definitely Dale Earnhardt, and he really struck a chord with the average NASCAR race fan. He was just a poor kid from Kannapolis, an old mill town. You know, his dad was a great driver, but he never made a lot of money, but he did exactly what he wanted to do. He was having a good time doing it. And uh, so Dale wanted to be a racer, and his father said, if you stay in school and if you graduate, I'll buy you or I'll build you a, the best car you've ever seen. Well, Dale said, the heck with that. He, uh, he dropped out of school in 10th grade, and he wanted to go racing. And uh, we have the original uh, information sheet that Dale Earnhardt filled out in 1975, February of 75, when he applied for his first Cup Series license. You'll see on there where Dale Jr. was only three months old. Uh, something that a lot of folks don't know is that Dale wrestled in high school. His favorite drivers were Bobby Isaac, one of our new inductees this year into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and also Richard Petty. He was very superstitious of the color green and the number 13 and peanuts. And looking at his father's information sheets from the 1950s, he had those same superstitions. So uh, he was uh, kind of hearkening back to the old school. And uh, he was one of the only guys probably of his era that could have raced with his father, with Fireball Roberts, with Buck Baker, with these rough, tough guys, Curtis Turner. Uh, he was he was kind of like an everyman, too. I think every fan in the, in the, the stands could relate to him. And he was the guy who made it. He was one of them that made it to the big time.